All right, ladies and gentlemen, this video is intended to help you out if you have to play tenor when tenor sax is not your main instrument. So primarily that transition from being really familiar with alto and then having to switch over to tenor. All right, so let's get to it. Way back in the day, I started out on alto sax like probably most of us. And then my junior year in high school, I switched to tenor and I pretty much never looked back. However, I struggled for a long time. I knew tenor was my voice, but I still felt very familiar with playing alto saxophone. So I wanna go over some of the more obvious and then the less obvious differences between these two instruments. And then I'm gonna point out some tips for you to help you along the way to really help you develop being comfortable on tenor and helping you to develop your sound. Obviously, the biggest difference between these two saxophones is that the tenor is larger than the alto. However, the tenor is not proportionately bigger than an alto saxophone. In other words, you don't just scale an alto saxophone up and then you have a tenor. The instrument is different in significant ways. Obviously, the neck is going to be one of the more obvious ones. But let's take a look at some of the less obvious differences that's going to end up causing you some problems if you're not careful. All right. See how much closer the neck strap hook is to this side E key on an alto as opposed to a tenor. There's a considerable distance that's there. One of the biggest consistent issues that we have as any kind of saxophone player is being able to hear ourselves. Now as an alto player, you have a bell that's closer to your face and also the bell is pointing more upward than a tenor saxophone. On a tenor, the bell is a little bit lower. It's a bit further away from the body of the horn and also the bell protrudes just a little bit further out these are the things you really need to take care of because it's going to greatly affect how you shape your sound on tenor. One of the biggest issues that I hear with a lot of alto players switching to tenor is that they try and brighten the instrument up so that way they can get that same kind of alto feel when they're hearing themselves. And it's never going to work out if you do that. Now, because of the inherent nature of the design of the tenor saxophone, it is a less resistant instrument than an alto saxophone. So you want to take into consideration what kind of airflow versus resistance that you have when you're playing. These kind of things manifest themselves greatly when it comes to stuff like articulation and overtones. I do a lot of altissimo videos and a lot of people struggle playing altissimo on tenor because the resistance is less than what's on alto. So I have a whole bunch of videos. I'll put some links in the description about how I approach that. But I do wanna leave you guys in this video with a couple of tips specifically concerning overtones. Now, most people would be correct if they said that an alto and a tenor saxophone has the same fingering system, at least for two and a half octaves. Now you'd be correct enough in thinking that, however, when you start using multiphonics, you can use the same fingering for alto and tenor, but you're gonna get different overtones. So it's actually not true that these instruments play the same notes within two and a half octaves. And once you start to get into altissimo, specifically that G, ooh, that G is gonna cause you some problems. <laughs> I'll leave you with a couple of fingerings in this video, but I have a lot of videos showing you a lot of different fingerings for that altissimo G. The lowest altissimo note on tenor is by far the hardest one to hit. Okay, let's continue. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so let me show you a couple of G fingerings. The first one is gonna be if you have a high F sharp on your saxophone, this one is by far the easiest G ever to hit. It's so easy, you don't even really have to know how to play saxophone in order to be able to play this note consistently using this fingering, which is just like B natural with the high F sharp key. I talk about this all the time in pretty much every video where I'm talking about an altissimo G. And the good thing to practice 
is to practice going from high G sharp to high B natural, back and forth just like this. But you add your high F sharp key to that. And instead of playing G sharp to B natural, you wind up playing F natural to altissimo G. most common way people play this altissimo G is just using the front key. Now you can adjust your saxophone if you have this adjustment screw here to get this front F key to just barely open up. Adjusting this screw is also going to make that front F a little funny as far as intonation goes. So that's one option that you have. One thing that guys do is scoop into that G from a front F. I hear guys do that way too much and you shouldn't have to do that just to be able to hit that note on this saxophone. So I'm gonna show you something that you can do that will add a fantastic amount of stability to that front G. All you do is just add the G sharp key to this fingering. And it really, really helps to facilitate being able to hit that note without scooping into it. In fact, whenever you go to a front F or a front E, you should just add this G sharp key anyway. So that way, when you get to that G, you have that stability that's there, and you're just used to adding your pinky key, G sharp, to that fingering in order to have it come out really nice. Check this out. I want to show you this multiphonic and it will greatly direct your brain on how to alter your embouchure in order to get overtones to come out. So the idea with using a multiphonic is that the overtones are much louder. So that way it's a lot easier for us to hear these other notes that are being created. This one is just like low E flat. Do not use the octave key for this just like low E flat, but lift the three key, lift the G key for this, and you should get this. So there's like a weird A. There's a B flat, that's a minor ninth above it. And then there's a out of tune palm F that's above it. All right, so you can hear it much easier when we use these multiphonic fingerings to help you to direct what you're supposed to do with your embouchure. you're dialing in your ear so you're hearing this instrument for what it's doing and not expecting it to be something that it's not okay i use this app called tonal energy tuner so if you watch what happens when i play a note you can see it splits all those up and it actually shows you what the overtones are this thing is great. I think I paid around $5 for it. I use this a lot and I most definitely use this when I'm doing long tones and when I'm doing multiphonics. There's a bunch of harmonics and overtones that are being produced whenever you play any single note and being familiar with how this instrument does it is going to really help you facilitate developing your sound and getting comfortable on this instrument. Now I could say that same thing if this was an alto video and you were talking about tenor. So either way, this works. I wanna skim through some products, tenor saxophones themselves, and also the mouthpieces. So let's just get a general idea of what you should be looking to spend, depending on how much time you're gonna put into actually playing tenor. If you get one or two gigs a year playing tenor, 
probably not a good idea to spend a whole lot of money on a sax or a mouthpiece. But if you play this instrument, fall in love with it, and you want to play it regularly, it's a good idea to just go ahead and make the investment. Let's take a look. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So as you can see here, we have the lower cost end of saxophones. And I would highly advise you, especially if you live in the United States, to stay away from these saxophones. Just doing a repad for some of these is going to cost you more than what the saxophone is even worth. Making them just disposable. As soon as you need a repad, just junk the thing and buy another one. I don't know how many saxophones you want to acquire, but for me, it's a really bad investment. Over here, we have what I'd like to say is pretty much the real starting point if you want to get into getting a saxophone. Now, in general, tenor saxophones are going to cost more than alto, but you can work out some pretty reasonable prices. Also, there's financing that's available for some of these products. I think that around the $3,000 range, here's a couple horns from Eastman. Uh, Yamaha has some nice offers from right around the $3,000 to $3,500 range. That'll get you a really, really nice saxophone that'll last you a very long time. And of course, if you want to really spend some money, you can spend up to, well, whatever on like a vintage Mark VI or something like that. But as far as new horns go, they make some really really nice saxophones that will definitely carry a lot of their value in case you want to either trade or get something new so as far as mouthpieces go i like to recommend some very easy to play beginner style mouthpieces especially if you don't really know what kind of investment you're going to have with playing tenor saxophone anyway it's nice to have some inexpensive examples that you can get and get going with this instrument, get some gigs going, and ultimately be able to capitalize on your investment. And of course, you can go on the high end of that and get some high-end products from Jody Jazz or Theo Wanner or even Gary Segal. Recently, I've been seeing the prices of stuff fluctuating a lot. So as far as the high-end saxophones and mouthpieces go, this might be a good chance to finance or maybe buy something and then sell it later on down the line if the prices go back up again so that's something to definitely consider so that's all i got for you ladies and gentlemen i'm going to keep these videos coming i'm going to post a whole lot of stuff from my other videos in the description box for this so hit that like button subscribe hit that bell thanks for tuning in ladies and gentlemen see ya